Sugar River Rail Trail is a 9.8 mile long trail running from Claremont to Newport, New Hampshire. Beginning in Claremont, parking can be found along Route 103, about half a mile beyond the Riverbend Center. The trail hooks directly into the path from there. Also known as the Sugar River Recreational Trail, this trail follows close to the Sugar River for almost 10 miles. The trail begins by following close to the river. After about a mile, it enters into the woods. About a mile and a quarter later, you'll come across the trail's first big highlight. So Aries and I are now getting to a pretty awesome highlight along this trail. It's one of what I believe will be two covered bridges. That little girl is showing it to us. Spanning the Sugar River, this original covered bridge is still standing strong. As you can see with this covered bridge, it's very similar to ones that you'd find on roadways, but there are some pretty significant differences, such as the fact that it has a 21-foot clearance. You can see there's one giant arch in between two rows of latticework. So these had to be pretty strong to take fully loaded trains over them, and they had to be pretty tall as well. Something you may notice here is there's a pipe that comes up, it comes across, goes down one side all the way, crosses back and comes back. So I don't really know what that pipe up in the roof is for. It looks almost like it could be um, for a fire suppression system. It's right up here. There actually is a fire hydrant. Shortly after the bridge, the trail comes to the first road crossing. And as you can see behind us, covered bridge looks to be maybe about a quarter of a mile behind us. Here, the trail follows right next to Chandler's Mill Road. Even though we're right next to the road now, you can see there's still evidence of the rail line. Here's a little more evidence of the old rail line. A bridge crossing. Remember that the trail is shared, so always keep an eye out. So I wanted to show that even in the winter you can get out and hike these trails and enjoy them. Right now it's pretty nice and packed down. You can see that the snowmobilers who go by, such as those couple that we saw earlier, um, they make the trail a nice firm surface so you can walk. You can snowshoe if you want. But I also wanted to show, just highlight the beauty of winter around here. Ooh, here we come up on the next covered bridge. This is actually a lot closer to the first covered bridge that we came across than I thought it would be. A little over a mile from the first covered bridge, you'll arrive at the second one. There is a single pull-off along the road, though it's hard to spot in the winter. But this bridge here, it's... It's quite similar to the other one, but I would say it's probably twice as long. This one does not have any of the, the arcing between the lattice work. But it also it has the piping in the ceiling like the other one did. So I noticed down below there is a sprinkler, which means that this is a sprinkler system. All those pipes up above and it turns out they're down below also. After admiring the bridge, it was time to head off again. Hey Aries! Aries, look! There's a sign here that we just passed. Five mile. Which means we are halfway done with this trail. After passing the halfway mark, we walked by a field, rounded a few bends, and soon saw Route 103 again where the next parking area is found. So Aries and I just passed by another parking area. Uh, it didn't appear to be on a named road, but just keep an eye out for the log yard sign and you'll be all set. After the parking area, the trail continues to wind along the Sugar River about one and three quarters miles before it hits the next bridge. So up ahead there is another bridge, one of the larger ones, and it is a wrought iron bridge. And there is another bridge up ahead. 
and you see it is yet another style and I can actually see two more bridges right here there's one right there and then another wrought iron bridge way up there I read online that this trail actually has about a dozen bridges in all which that's kind of a big number seeming that the trail itself is not quite 10 miles long so you're looking at more than one per mile at the intersection of Greenwood Road and Oak Street there are a handful of parking spots some of which are snow covered in the winter All right, Nerys and I are now getting to this next bridge. And down below here, it looks like an old canal. It is an old canal. After the bridges, the trail leads back into the woods for two miles before arriving lower down on Oak Street. I knew somewhere along here we'd spot an area that you go between two properties. Proper trail etiquette. Be courteous of private property owners on either side of the trail. Shortly after Oak Street, you'll cross the last bridge and round the last bend. Yeah, what are you looking at? I don't know about you, but to me it looks like the end of the trail up there. And indeed it was the Newport Trailhead. Located on Belknap Avenue and highlighted by a very old crossing sign, this end offers ample parking. So this trail has quite a bit to offer, whether it's winter or summer. Winter, you've got snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, hiking, dog sledding. Summer, you've got biking, hiking, running, walking. And this is one of the few trails that actually allows ATVs on it. So if you're into any of those things, or maybe more that I think of in the moment, this trail could be perfect for you.